Today, I'm flying business class on the French flag carrier, Air France. Given the French eye for luxury and quality within the hospitality industry, how does this translate in the sky? I'll be providing you with a brutally honest review of what it's like to fly up front. This involves the good, the bad, and the ugly. What's more, I'll take the financial hit so you don't have to of the quite frankly obscene ticket prices demanded to fly across the pond at present. Let's find out if this is really le chic or um le shite. Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. You join me today on a very cold, wet and windy day in Chicago. Without any more to say, let's head out of the cold and into the terminal to check in for our flight. Being the fact that we're going to be flying on business class, we thankfully have sky priority. If not, the economy queue does look pretty long. Excellent, that's great. Thank you so much. Flight requirements today are a PCR test, a sworn statement, an onward ticket from France. Boarding pass issued, let's head now through security and go and find out what lounge situation we have today. I'm not that optimistic if I'm honest, but let's just see what happens. As with most airports in the US, no priority security is facilitated by the airline. All through TSA, hopefully for the last time for at least a few weeks. Um, I won't be missing that element of the US. Anyway, now I need to go and work out if there's any kind of lounge. Now I've read online that there is an Air France lounge. Whether it's open is another fact altogether. Also, I never got told about any kind of lounge access at check-in, so I'm assuming that probably it's not the case. However, I've got Priority Pass, got Amex Platinum, so maybe there'll be some other options. And so begins the most disappointing airport lounge crawl I've ever done. Behold, the closed Air France lounge. So what else can we find? This is Chicago International Airport after all. Korean lounge, closed. BA lounge, entry restricted. SAS lounge, closed. So literally the only other option on one is of course this lounge here, but it's at capacity. Refusing to give up, and after my phone research yielding nothing but the option of a workspace cubicle, there's only one place left. Can I get a vanilla milkshake please? You don't have any. Can I get a Diet Coke and a cookie then please? This is the current setup, having to make my own form of lounge. This is pretty depressing, if I'm honest. Um, and it's become all too common throughout the pandemic where airlines have uh, shut lounges, etc. But the problem today is that it is a ticket which is charged at several thousand dollars, quite a significant expense, and there's nothing offered whatsoever. I feel like if an airline has shut the lounge, they should offer some credit or something, or else what is the point of that premium? Yes, on board, of course, you get more, but at the airport, you still want to have something, right? After that, uh, if I'm honest with you, total mess of an experience. Let's hope that it gets a little bit better now. Let's go over to gate M8, just over here, and go and see what Air France is really like. A little update, it's a delay, um, because they have to recheck everyone's documents apparently. a lot of extra document checks today. Ah, it seems I spoke too soon. We have to wait for a further 20 minutes at the entrance to the jet bridge. Finally, it appears that we're going down the jet bridge. So um, uh, let's just try a look at the time. Yeah, we're well over an hour behind schedule, but let's draw a line under that and focus instead on the onboard review today. Let's hope Air France make up for this in the sky. It's time for a quick word from today's video sponsor, NordVPN. It goes without saying, I travel a lot, using countless unsecured internet hotspots in airline lounges, hotels, and even bars. For years now, I've been using NordVPN to protect my privacy online. It's not just for privacy though, but to keep in contact with my friends and family back home in parts of the world where FaceTime and WhatsApp are blocked, such as in Dubai. With NordVPN, I can change my location back to the UK and continue to use these blocked services unrestricted. This also means I can continue to watch my favorite TV shows and 
even sports as to all intents and purposes, my computer is virtually based in the UK now. If you don't use a VPN to protect your privacy at home or when you travel, right now you can get yourself the holiday season deal. Go to nordvpn.com slash trektrendy to get a two year plan plus one additional month three with a huge discount. Remember, this comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. Thanks again to NordVPN for making this video possible. Welcome on board the Air France Boeing 777 with business class in a one to one layout. Let's get my luggage stowed and settle into my seat, 17 Lima. If traveling solo like I, you'll want a window seat as these all feature direct aisle access and relative privacy. The seats are spacious enough, but I don't like the yellow cabin lighting. I wish they could take some pointers from Virgin Atlantic on cabin ambience. Shortly after arriving at my seat, I'm presented with a pre-departure beverage. I go for water and OJ this evening, but champagne is available. I also have a menu waiting for me, complete with a wide selection of food for this eight hour flight. We'll take a proper look at this when we're airborne. There's also an amenity kit handed out containing Clarins moisturizer, dental kit, flight socks, a pen, chew horn, and eye mask. Not bad at all. It's not long before boarding is complete, so I get my seatbelt fastened and we begin to push back well over an hour late now. The safety video is screened, which I really like on Air France. It's engaging, classy and very French. You'll notice there's a low res belly cam on the 777. It's a nice touch, but shocking quality. Just like that, finally, we hurtle down the runway into the rainy Chicago night sky. Tonight's flight will take us around eight hours, over six and a half thousand kilometers. As we begin to level out, it's time to boot the Tims off. There are no slippers or indeed PJs provided tonight, which isn't very chic, but sadly the norm in business class. Let's have a look around my seat then. These face towards the window in a reverse herringbone formation. In front of me, aside from the IFE screen, there's a cubby space for my feet, which is thankfully spacious and unrestrictive. To my right, there's a counter and a cupboard where my noise cancelling headphones are stowed. Overall, it's a comfy seat, but certainly quite dated. Let's get my food ordered then. Here's what's on offer this evening. The selection is very impressive. Standouts being the lobster salad, foie gras and steak, options usually associated with first class. After placing my order, I looked down, horrified to find a used and filthy earplug, not cool Air France. Let's try and get that out of our minds with food service beginning. My tray arrives, yes, it's all served on one tray because of uh, COVID. So now begins the arduous task of taking all the plastic lids off one by one revealing my tasty starter of lobster salad with smoked pork. It was every bit as delicious as it sounds, so top work Air France. Next up, after a sip of sparkling water, I'm offered some fresh bread, which complements my salad. So the main event, steak with a red wine dew. This is perhaps the most impressive steak I've had in business before, cooked medium rare as you can see. This is particularly rare to see on board as they usually cooked like leather, so top marks here. Finishing this off, it's time for my cheese plate, which went beautifully with some warm olive infused bread. I'm starting to feel pretty full now though. Last but not least, the trio of dessert miniatures. Highlight here being the macaroon, which is one of my favorite French delights. Wow, I'm stuffed now and pretty tired. Let's get that tray table folded up and head over to the loo for a review. It's very 1990s in here. There's no real creativity. However, there is some cabin spray, generic hand soap, but impressively some quality full size Clarins amenities. Aside from that, nothing special though. So after freshening up, let's return to my seat and get this made up into a bed. You get just a blanket and pillow provided with no mattress pad, but today I have the added luxury of the flight being quiet. So I'm able to use more pillows and blankets. Of course, the seats go fully flat, which is the norm in business class these days, but it's a comfortable space. The seat is a good balance of firm and squashy to allow for a comfortable yet supportive sleep. The main issue though is the airbag in the seatbelt, which restricts your ability to move very much. Anyway, night all. The next day. I got about three hours sleep, which isn't bad for a transatlantic red eye. As a result though, I'm in need of some coffee. Whilst I have this, what else is on the breakfast menu you ask? It's not bad at all. And whilst I can't say I'm starved, for the purpose of the review, I'll try it out. The breakfast omelette is fluffy, fresh, and very tasty. No powdered eggs here. There's yogurt with granola, which is okay, but nothing special. There was a croissant provided too, which surprised me by not being very great. 
we are after all on a French airline. I finished off with the fruit salad, which was fresh and zesty. After my food, I'm provided with a packaged towel to freshen up. I wish they had proper towels here, I can only assume this is a COVID cut. With that, we begin to descend into what looks like quite a cloudy French morning. I get my seatbelt on, and before I know, we're hurtling down into the clouds to reveal, as I anticipated, a cloudy French daybreak. We land safely, and after a short taxi, we're at stand, and with it, the close of my Air France business class adventure. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Right guys, so welcome to Paris, France. That was a really, really good flight actually. I was thoroughly impressed with Air France's business class proposition. Uh, given the fact that their 777 actually has a, a pretty competitive business class, and the fact that it's quite an old plane as well, you'd probably want to pick the A350 if you could, but of course that's not on all of the routes. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching and I'll catch you guys all again next week.